I saw that at the age of 14, you knew that you wanted to be a chef. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, it's a good question. Did, did I know 100%? I mean, I knew I loved cooking. And that's something that, uh, that I've kind of loved my whole life. But I knew at 14, I kind of realized that uh, maybe I could do this. You know what I mean? And, and my mom was always uh, getting me involved in the kitchen as a kid. And, but I think at 14 is when I kind of realized, like, oh, wait a minute. This is not just fun and having, I could maybe do this for a living, you know, which it never kind of clicked before. So, yeah, so I could say that. Okay, so you knew at a young age that you thought you could do this, but yeah. then there's a lot of work that goes into getting there. I think it was 2006 when you opened your first restaurant, which yeah. means lots of long hours, not a lot of pay along no. the road. What was that like? You know, I worked for, at that point, I'd worked in the restaurant. Uh, business for probably like 10, 12 years or something like that, making no money. Then I opened my restaurant and made even less money. <laughs> uh, and now that restaurant is turning 12 in a month. So, so we're 12 years into it, you know. What I would say on the business side of things is I'm still learning every day, you know what I mean? Uh, our systems are way better than they were when we started and, you know, we've kind of had ups and downs. Uh, but I gotta say, you know, it's uh, now in our 12th year, I feel like we're, we're finally, uh, it took us a while, I guess, and, you know, it, it's kind of my baby, so I'm always, I'm a little bit defensive, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm always very uh, concerned with how people view and see it, but internally, I, I definitely think that from, from A to Z, we've, we're there. We've, we've, you know what I mean? I don't think you ever, as a business owner, you're always trying to make things better, tweak things. So I wouldn't say like that we've arrived, but I would say in the last 12 years, we've, we're definitely the best that we've been. Uh, so, so it's exciting for us that there's always room to improve and do better, so. And you know, talk about the last 12 years or the past decade, so much has changed for chefs, the era of the celebrity chef and your big Iron Chef victory over Bobby Flay. I've heard you say that maybe you would have, had that not been the case, gone down the road of becoming a hockey player or something? Yeah, I mean, the dream is still there. <laughs> uh, it might be over, but I, I still play quite a bit of hockey. And yeah, Bobby Flay, for, for me, the Iron Chef battle kind of put me on the map in terms of the world, if you will. You know, uh, in Montreal, uh, we had a small restaurant, things were going well, but in terms of, you know, the world watching, uh, it was huge. I mean, for, for my career, for the restaurants, uh, you know, it brought me to a whole bunch of other things beyond the kitchen, you know, and I think you, you really hit the nail on the head when you say in the past 10 years, the, the food world has completely changed, you know. Um, it's given way to a lot of great things, uh, and not, a lot of not so good things, you know, I, I think, um, Kitchen work is, uh, is always going to be a um, hard task, a lot of long hours, minimum pay, uh, you know, passion. You need to be really passionate. And, and so I think, you know, all of this media attention is, is really good in terms of getting, you know, people cooking for themselves. Uh, and I would always promote that, you know. I think it's always better to, to get involved in. But then it also has given this idea to people that maybe it's easy or maybe, uh, you know, you can you know, chop a few carrots and then, hey, I'm gonna be, you know, on TV or do, so so there's good and bad, like a lot of things in, in life, you know what I mean? But for me, that that battle was really what kind of put me on the map. So, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, nerve wracking. And then when I won, I had this typical Canadian attitude about it of like, oh man, what did I do? I came all the way here. I'm so sorry I won. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, ah, oh, I ruined the vibe. You know, the, the random kid from Montreal comes here and beats this guy. Like, what did I do? So, so uh, internally, it was a different way of processing the whole thing. But uh, after like seven years or whatever, I'm cool with it now. All right. <laughs> well, you talked about the map. This has also afforded the, op the opportunity to go around the world. Yeah. Uh, and see different kitchens and different cultures. Is there a common theme in the restaurant business, would you say, around the world? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of a family, I guess. You know, I, I would say uh, it, it's, everybody's got their own, like, if, if I was to use my block, 
in, in Montreal as an example, you know, the guy next door that's got a restaurant, is he my best friend? Maybe not, you know. Do we have a lot in common? Of course. So when you travel the world and you meet other chefs or restaurateurs or people that are in the business, I think you have this common bond, you know, and the fact that you're not directly competing kind of helps as well, you know, in the reality of things. Like, um, so yeah, so I think traveling abroad and meeting chefs and, and seeing new things, trying new things, uh, is, is always been, you know, beneficial to me. But I think there is a common bond where people kind of, uh, you know, we know what we're going through in a sense kind of deal. And, and there's this kind of mutual respect, I would think. Um, but yeah, there definitely is, uh, this kitchen, you know, mentality or this this sense of like, hey, yeah, we're kind of on the same team. But like I said, on my block, it's different. <laughs> it's competition, right? Business is business. You know, yeah. no matter what you're doing, uh, doesn't mean we can't be friends. Doesn't mean we can't, you know, say hi. And but ultimately, it's like you know. Uh, in our little world, there's, there's a lot of competition. So traveling abroad is a lot easier to walk into a restaurant in Hong Kong and say, hey, guys, what are you learning? What? And the chef will be a lot easier to get tricks and tips out of when he knows I'm, you know, I'm going way far from wherever he's cooking. So I think that's, um, that's kind of like the, there's a bond, but there's also this, oh, okay. And it's interesting for the celebrity chef that goes around the world, it's sometimes those parallels to athletes that now have this global recognition yeah. and then have opportunities. For example, you teamed up with LG. Um, how did that come about? Well, you know, I teamed up with LG for the common good of Canadian homes and, and in terms of changing the way Canadians eat and, and feed themselves. You know, today is uh, National Food Waste Day. Um, big topic for us in restaurants. Uh, you know, in terms of the business side of things, I buy a chicken, I use the whole chicken, I use the bones, I, I, I will extend that chicken till there's really nothing left, you know? And it's not a romantic side of things, it's money. I paid for the chicken, I need to get the most out of it. So I'm trying to bring that, you know, with LG, we're kind of bringing that into Canadian homes and, and to get people to think of, you know, what they're buying, planning on how to buy it and reducing waste and in the end, reducing money uh, in the end, like saving money. And uh, so that's that's the concept of our of our video series that we've uh, come up with. We've got seven videos. They're launching today. Uh, people can go see them on um, LG.ca slash continuous kitchen. So we've got seven little videos that are really about you know, my perspective on food in terms of a chef, how do I use a chicken, you know? Um, another one is making bread at home with five ingredients that you have in your cupboard that you probably didn't even know that you can make bread with, you know? So it's all these little things that I think Canadians will connect with. Um, and also the greater goal here is to reduce waste, uh, to put more money in people's pockets in a sense and, and, and kind of take the mystery out of opening your fridge. You know what I mean? A lot of people are like, oh, ah, ooh. So I, I, I'm giving them tips, tricks, little things that are, you know, going to improve the way they, they look at their fridge, the way they use ingredients, and really getting the maximum out of it. So I think, I think it's, it's where business is going, you know, in any, in any kind of department or wherever you are. Like, you know, in the food business, it's always been a big, big concern because, you know, you throw 0.3 cents of parsley in the garbage every day, at the end of the year it's 500 bucks. You know, the same thing could be said about a lot of businesses. So I think even, you know, um, for us it's just been something that we've done forever. So we're, we're, you know, trying to get Canadians to plan more, have a better idea of what they're doing and ultimately, you know, save some money and, and save time and make great food. So that's always my angle, you know, to like get people to cook. I still love doing it, so. And it's a reminder that you know the business in the kitchen, but you also launched your own line of products. What, what's different between the business of being in the kitchen and running a restaurant and selling food? Yeah, 
It's uh, you know that's that's it's a great question and and they're it, they're two worlds apart. You know, uh, when you're cooking in a kitchen, you know. I guess in terms of marketing, you, you market your dish. You know, you sell it to the waiter first. You got to. You got to sell it to the waiters. The waiter will try it, and then he's going to sell it. And, you know, it's good, it's bad, whatever. You know, there's this kind of immediate chain of command, and, like, you, you get this sense of, like, well, you know, we tried this dish. It's not so good. Uh, or not that it's not so good, but maybe it won't sell. You know, you, you, I'm in the business of selling food. Now, this is a completely different... Um, aspect of food and business where I'm not in everybody's house or I'm not in the grocery store saying you know oh we got this from so there's a lot of marketing behind it there's a lot of product testing you know how do you make something that you stand behind and be able to sell it like you know I wouldn't say we're in mass production we're still very small batch and um, Obviously, we want to sell to as many people as we can, but the, the idea behind the products was, you know, they're my kitchen staples. I've basically teamed up with the people that I work with on a regular basis to make products that, that you can't just buy and reheat and eat. I want to give you a little, a little help, let's say, to make things a bit better. So uh, it's, it's been a real learning curve. Uh, it's, it's completely opposite. Uh, it's food, but it's still the complete opposite of, of restaurants because that connection, that you know, that sense of being able to talk to a customer, to being there, to cooking the food is just not there with this. So it's all the other stuff that I've always kind of like, I'm not going to say poo-pooed, but kind of. You know, like to me, if the product is good, you know, and the label's really ugly, I'm like, I know that I've been using this product, doesn't matter, you know? But when you start a business, then marketing becomes your most important thing. So what is it going to look like? You know, I know what's inside is good, but how are we going to... So I've been learning a lot, you know, I've been learning a lot and I'm, I'm lucky that I have a team surrounding me with that, that are, you know, we're, we're pretty much a startup in, in that sense that we, we did everything from, from the ground up, from sourcing the bottles to, you know, to getting my recipes done by people that I've been working with. Like, I buy vegetables from this guy, I do whatever I want with them, he doesn't necessarily know what I'm doing. So I'm like, now I want you to do this too. So it's been, it's been a, a crazy ride, it's going really well. Um, you know, the thing I love the most is hearing people enjoying what we're making. So that's still for me the, kind of what got me into cooking in the first place, seeing somebody like, you know, Oh, like one of those, you know, like from afar, I'm like, oh, oh, wow. she loves that, you know, and that's still the, the reason behind the, all of it, you know, ultimately that's the, that's the, why are we doing this is, is for that, so that's still the best, you know, sales or whatever, this is whatever, obviously we want to push and we want to make it a successful business, but to me is when people say, man, you know, your antipasto, oh, your olive oil, oh, you know, and so it's, it's just been a great ride. And uh, we're, we're still, you know, still coming out with new products and still working on that. Um, and, and hopefully inspiring Canadians, you know, ultimately to get in the kitchen and cook. And that's always, like, you're never going to see a frozen dinner that says Chuck Hughes that you can pop in the, you know what I mean, Un until, no. But, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's, it's really about, and it's always been that, is get people in the kitchen cooking and the benefits for your family, for your wallet, for your life, for your... They're all there, you know, they're all there. So, um, so yeah, so it's uh, to be continued, you know, I'm still, still working hard, so. Well, speaking of to be continued, since you're somebody who always likes to try new things, okay. we love to ask all our guests, what haven't you done that you might want to do? Could you see yourself getting out of the food zone to try something too? I will not do any skydiving. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if that's what you guys want to hear, it's not happening. Um, there's a couple of, you know, I studied in, in university, studied, um, but I was there and I learned a lot about marketing and that was my first passion. I wanted to work in an ad agency. I wanted to be a creative, um, you know, creative type in an ad agency, which is something I still would like to do. You know, maybe time's running out on that and, and my CV is like, uh, we'll chop carrots, we'll, so I don't know if, if it'll fit in, but something I've always really wanted to do. 
Um, and now that I'm, you know, I don't know, I used to be really into sports when I was a kid a lot, and then, you know, I cook, I was cooking, and it's just, it's long hours, and I kind of fell out a bit a little bit, and now I have young kids, so I'm back into to that. So I would say, if anything, it would kind of be, it's very random, right? But like, maybe in sports, or in this type of creative marketing, or, because I still kind of really do like that aspect, and, and you know, that's, so a lot of this relationship with LG is a lot of that as well, where I get, I get to be creative uh, and, and still kind of work a bit outside of the kitchen, even though it's, it's related. Um, so I think those two things would probably be something that I, I'd love to do, yeah. Because the hockey player thing, I know it's definitely over.